eight, nine, ten, twenty. Hey, Lily, look at this ten pound note. Who is this on the back? That is a good question, Ash. I'm not sure. Joseph, who is the man with the bushy eyebrows and the long white beard on the ten pound note? Ah, uh, that is Charles Darwin. He is one of the world's greatest ever scientists. Wow. What did he do, Joseph? Why is he so famous? The Darwin discovered things about plants and animals which no one ever knew before. How did he do that, Joseph? When he was just 22 years old, he set off to faraway lands on a ship called the Beagle. While Darwin was on his adventure, he looked very carefully at all the strange and wonderful plants and animals he saw. Some plants had different shaped leaves, and some birds had longer beaks than others. But why were they all different, Joseph? Where did they come from? That is exactly what Darwin asked himself. And the more animals and plants he saw, the more he wondered where had they all come from. How did he remember everything he had seen? I bet he wrote things down like me. He did, and he drew pictures, although not very good ones. He also collected a lot of animals, plants and fossils. He spent the rest of his life thinking about his collections and what they all meant. <laughs> He made a path around his large garden and called this his thinking path. Darwin walked this path every day, sometimes several times, and usually with his dog, Polly. On these walks, he could observe plant life and animals and think about everything he'd discovered and seen. What can we do to be like him, Joseph? I really want to find out more about plants and animals. Or even go on my own thinking walks. Well, that's easy. Darwin was first interested in plants and animals when he was just a child, like you two. And just look where it got him. He was always looking, thinking and wondering why some plants were taller than others why insects were buzzing around flowers and why worms were moving in the soil. So you can do it too. For a start, you can join in with Kew's Great Plant Hunt. Kew Gardens are celebrating Charles Darwin's 200th birthday by helping everyone to follow in his amazing footsteps. I would really like to follow in his footsteps and maybe discover things that even Darwin didn't find. You couldn't do that, Ash. Darwin must have found everything already. Oh, no. There are still all sorts of things which Darwin didn't find. People are still hunting for new plants and animals. There are still lots that we don't know about nature. <laughs> Plant hunters all over the world are still looking for new plants and collecting plants and seeds to send to Kew Gardens, just like Darwin used to. Here's some plant hunters. Fiona, Carly, Masego, Mokta, Richard, and Dan. 
And they are all helping with the great plant hunt too. They are going to show all children how to discover and learn more about the amazing plant life where they live. You could even become a scientist one day like them and Darwin. When you join in with the great plant hunt at school, you will go on your own adventures to find out more about nature. You could even have your own thinking path. Our website is full of ideas, games and videos to help you become a great plant hunter. You can share your findings and you can keep an eye on what other schools are doing too, all over the country. They might be discovering all sorts of different things where they live. Come on, Lily and Ash. Let's start looking a bit more closely at what is around us in Kew Gardens. Yes, I can't wait to get started. Me too. Come on then, let's go plant hunting. Mm -hmm.